for this time in your presence. Have your way tonight. Speak to every heart. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout an amen. Hallelujah. Oh, put your hands together for Jesus. God bless you. May be seated in the presence of the Lord. Well, tonight I'm beginning a new series. Wow. Hallelujah. Are you excited about that? Yeah. I feel you're going to put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Last month we talked about how to be good assistants. And um, I want to believe that you have learned a thing or two about how to be a good assistant. How many feel that? You needed to hear some of those things that you heard. Yeah. It's one of the things that I realized that a lot of people don't know how to assist properly. And so, um, I thought that we should go through that. And we even haven't finished. Uh, we will come to it again. But at least something small for you to chew on and to meditate on how to be a good assistant. And Assist well. Like I said, all of you, wherever you find yourself, you are an assistant one way or the other. And so you need to understand how to assist and um, do it and do it well. Hallelujah. Um, I see the light on there in the conference room. I don't know. Um, Said, so can you find out if somebody's there? I, I, I wonder why the light should be on over there. Okay, if there isn't, you know what? Um, just okay, you <laughs> go and come, otherwise, I'm sure you'll be more confused, right? So, I'm beginning a new series from Bishop's book Attempt Great Things for God. Attempt great things for God. Alright. Uh, Ralph, am I supposed to stay at one place because uh, sometimes when there's nobody there, then I sort of feel like I have to just stay at one place. Okay, but see, that's why everybody must learn to do something in the house of God. Ralph is the same person checking sound, he's checking video, he's checking this, he's checking that. It's amazing. You see, some of you must learn how to do the video. Yeah. I don't know, Emma. I don't know what you do. Dennis, I don't know what you do. Yeah, no man. You can all do it. It's something that everybody must learn how to do. Even the ladies. Yeah. And it's a rustling. You look like somebody who can do it. You know, so every one of you should learn how to act around, teach people. You should. Present yourself to be used in the, in the house of God to do God's work. Hallelujah. And I believe that probably this series is also going to help us to uh, rise up and do something. Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54. Is somebody there? Nobody there. So somebody left the light on there. God forgive maybe you can help us just go through my office to that place and uh, switch off that light. Right, Isaiah chapter 54. Let's all read from verse 1 to verse 3. Ready, go. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 1 to 3. Sing, O Barry, thou that didst not bear. Break forth. Are you reading? Read like so, yes. Ready, go. Sing, O Barry. Thou that is not bear, break forth into singing. And cry aloud, thou that is not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, say the Lord. Verse 2. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cause, strengthen thy stakes, for thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, 
and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Hallelujah. Amen. So, this is a prophetic word from the prophet Isaiah to the children of Israel. And um, he was encouraging them uh, not to give up because uh, greater days are ahead. Amen. Especially if you are barren, believe that you are not going to be barren any longer. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. But verse 2 is, is something to take note of. He said, Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitations. So, one of the things that he was saying to them was have a mind to do more than you are doing. Have a mind to have more than you have. Enlarge the place of your tent. Once you start enlarging, it means that you are looking forward to something more than what you have. Yeah. And let's say you have a church and um, you have a few chairs there and just a few people are coming into church and then you decided that let me expand and let me bring in more chairs. What do you have in mind? Yes, you have in mind that you're going to have more people coming in. And so you decided to increase the number of chairs. In the same way, this scripture is encouraging us to have a mind to do more. Yeah. You see, the church must begin to think this way because even the devil is thinking that way. The Bible says that hell has enlarged its mouth. Hell. Yeah. Can you look at that scripture? I think it's Isaiah 5, 14 or something like that. Hell has enlarged. It said, Isaiah 5, 14. He said, therefore hell has enlarged itself and opened her mouth without measure. Hey! So, even the devil is expecting more people. When he looks at the way things are going, and he looks at the way the church is behaving, he's beginning to see that it looks like he's going to have more people than he's expecting. So, hell is making renovations. And they are widening the gates. Because they don't want a stampede at the gate of hell. Okay. I mean, this should make us sit up yes. and realize that, hey, if that's how the devil is working, it means that we must do greater things for God. Yeah. I don't know whether you are hearing me. So, when they say that attempt great things for God, you must begin to think big in the thing that you do for God. Many of us are attempting something, but we are not attempting great things. Hallelujah. Amen. But we are talking about attempting great things for God. Not just anything at all, but having a mind that I am going to do even greater. Amen. Oh, can I hear your loud and say amen? amen. So you find Bishop saying here that this book is about attempting to do something great for God. Make an attempt. Make an attempt. Are you here? Make an attempt to do something great for God. Don't just sit there and say, I don't know what I can do. You can do a lot more than you're doing. You can do great things and greater things. In fact, Jesus said in John, is it chapter 12 and verse 24? Is that it? It said, The works that I do shall you do also. I know this one is except the call of reports to the God, but is it 14? 14 what? 12, I think. The, the, the scriptures. Yeah, 
I'm going to pray to you. Okay, 14 to 1. He said, Very, very, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works, somebody say greater works, than these shall he do because I go to the Father. So Jesus is expecting you to do greater works. Oh, your amen is weak. Amen. Attempt to do greater works. Attempt to do greater works. Make up your mind, I'm going to do something greater than what I'm doing. You will discover many great things. You will discover many great things you can do for the Lord. A great thing is something that God calls great. If God doesn't call it great, then it's not great. Throughout the scriptures, you see that in different parts, God speaks of great things. That's why that, that, that song writer said, You are great. Yes, you are. Holy one. You walked upon the sea. You raised the dead. You reigned in majesty. My divine. Everything written about you is great. Because you see, the God that we serve is a great God. And anybody who is serving Him must have a mind that I'm going to do great things for God. I see you doing great things for God. I see you attempting great things for God. In the name of Jesus, in this year and in this month, I see you attempting great things for God. In the name of Jesus, we're going to do it. I said we're going to do it. In Jesus' name. He said we are interested in things that are great in the eyes of God. We are interested in things that are called great in the Bible. What is great to a businessman may not be great to a servant of God. And what is called great to a politician may not be called great in the sight of God. So, if you are going to compare greatness with the way the world sees greatness, you will make a mistake. And that is how come some people will be shocked when they arrive in heaven. Because you will think that you did some great things. But in the sight of God, those things were not great. Yeah. These words from the prophet Isaiah are telling us to attempt to create a larger tent. Mm -hmm. Attempt to build a bigger tent. Expect more people to occupy the tent. Expect to need a bigger tent to give a covering to a larger crowd. Wow. The prophecy is clear. For all who are interested in visions of God, the visions of God tell us to attempt to check and enlarge our ministries. The visions of God tell us to expect great things and to attempt great things. Hallelujah. Amen. So these were the words of William Carey who was a missionary to India and he said attempt great things for God and expect great things from God this year this month attempt great things for God expect great things from God I said what attempt great things for God expect great things from God I didn't hear you attempt great things for God expect great things from God. Yes. So we need to see, like we're saying, the things that are important to the sight of God. Luke 16, verse 15. Thank you, Lord. Oh, wow. Hmm. He said, and he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves. Before men, you justify yourself before men, but God knoweth your heart. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. So there are things that we esteem as great, 
in the sight of men. But in the sight of God, the Bible says it's an abomination. And we need to be careful. We need to check our lives. What are the things you are doing for men? Great things you are doing for men. And it's an abomination in the sight of God. Yeah? You may be doing great things for CCC. <laughs> or you are doing great things for TTT. Or AAQ. Or AQA. Because I see that the company these days they have letters. MTN, AGA. So we do we have our letters. KKK. KQB. You may be doing great works for all these companies. But it is all an abomination in the sight of God. No, ask yourself, who do you do great things for? Yeah. And of all these things, which one will last? Yeah. I see how some of you run, sweat, give yourselves wholly to things of this world. And when it comes to the things of God, it is like we are pulling hair out of your nose. <laughs> Just to get you to do something small for God. Hey. I mean, God must be very sad that the people that He gave Himself to, who, who are very happy that they have been saved, when they came, they did not give themselves to the work that they had called or He saved them for. They started giving themselves to other things. They are, they are looking for other things. They are looking for money. They are looking for fame in the world. But not the things of God. Yeah. They said, you are there who savor the things of the world and not the things of Christ. So, we need to be checking ourselves to see what, what are we giving ourselves to? One day I heard Bishop say, he said, he met somebody who gave him his complimentary card or her complimentary card or something. And the things they had written on the complimentary card, it is something very powerful. This is this, MS something something, MD of this and CEO of this and so many things. You can easily be afraid. <laughs> but he said when he took the car and he looked at it, he, he heard the Holy Spirit say, it's all sandcastle. Mm -hmm. Do you know sandcastle? Yeah. Some of you have not been playing the sand before. Even in Ashanti Beji, there's no beach here to be covered. The only place you know is the Lake Busuki or something. Or <laughs> Lake Busuki. <laughs> Travel to Accra. Eh? Or go this way. You'll be going towards Cape Cruz. And then at least you can have the beach there. Yeah. But some of you just been in Awase and uh, just this uh, Shantyo Beach. You have never seen the sea before. How many of you have never seen the sea before? Not on TV. <laughs> no, 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 don't bring yourself. Don't bring yourself. Who said I'm talking about TV? I've seen it in the movie. I'm not talking about it. I said, you have been there at the beach and you're walking in the sun. Give me a wave of your hand. You have never been there before. Give me a wave of your hand. See people. They will not speak the truth. But sometimes when you go to the beach and you are playing, we build what we call sand castles. You use the sand to make a castle, build something. But the thing about that thing is that as soon as there's a wave that comes, by the time the wave goes down, the whole sandcastle is down. And what the Holy Spirit was saying was that this thing that you are seeing that looks just one wave, it 
it will all just go down. So, are you building a sandcastle thinking that you are doing something great? Or you are actually doing great things for God? Every time you do great things or great secular things, you reduce your chances of doing great things for God. Great things on earth are not great things for God. Earthly things have left the churches dry. That which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Many have set the nations of heaven and of God aside. Instead of seeing that we can do great things for God, church leaders have led the church into business, education, and other secular uh, social works. Mercy. So winning and church planting are not the same as building secular schools and health institutions. You may easily think that we are also doing something as we are building schools. And, and, and that's, the, that's the, 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 the problem. That people feel that when we go and win souls, it's not powerful. When we go preaching the word of God, it's not something powerful. But when we have built a hospital, and said, this hospital was built by a so and so church, then it's like, Jerusalem Ministries International Church built this hospital. Oh, wow. They have done very well. We should clap for them. Clap for Jerusalem Ministries International Church. Or, we do a, a, a ball or we provide something, a school, then yeah, they are doing great things. You see, it's great. We are not saying that it should not be done. And our church, we have all these things. You all know it. We have schools, our school, we are almost getting to the university. We have a, a hospital. We are highly having different this thing to see to. Uh, the under uh, privilege and all that different we have a uh, orphanage all these things are good I mean when you do it they say you are great but we will make the mistake of thinking that that is what is great in the sight of God it is good but you see it is not what we are being called to do yeah God education said is supposed to bring the schools <laughs> not the church and because they are not doing it, that's why the church has risen up to do it. The investments that they built, they just three that they built. <laughs> one Raka, one in Kipus, one in Kumasi, just three. <laughs> and the population is increasing. A lot more people are coming up. What do we do? They started painting the polytechnics and turning them into investments. <laughs> and it's not the same it's not the same so now the church is looking at their members looking at the way things are going the members can get into the schools and even the schools the number of people that are there hey, the toilet that they are using about how many people and they are having SOS do you know SOS <laughs> Ask the next question, what SOS is he show you? <laughs> Too bad. Yeah. And so the church now has to build a school to support because what is happening is it's not helping. But it doesn't mean that that's the work. But we can easily deceive ourselves thinking that we are very great. And we are doing great things for God. But that's not it. That's not it. Yeah. Because Jesus' great commission, he didn't say, go into the world and build uh, schools, no. Hospital. hospitals, and balls. Is, is that what Jesus said? No. And the world is making us feel that, no, we have not understood what Jesus said. <laughs> but this is what Jesus said. No, that is not what Jesus said. 
We must not try to do any other thing apart from what Jesus said. Are you there? Decided to go back home. A church is a very spiritual body. A church is not a building. Salvation is not education. Salvation is the conversion of the soul and the transformation of the spirit of a man. Making disciples for Jesus is not the same as raising leaders and entrepreneurs for the business world. When I speak about attempting great things for God, I am not talking about building hotels, universities, secondary schools, boroughs, and connecting electricity to villages. I'm talking about achieving the goal for which Jesus Christ came into this world. The salvation of the world through the blood of Jesus Christ. The greatest work is indeed a spiritual work. You might not like to understand it. Yeah. So don't go and sit at a TTT and be working your 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 what? Your heart out and your other places out. For them and say, I'm doing great things. No. Listen, let's try and compare all these great things we are doing in other places. Bring it to God. I'm telling you, God will bless you even greater than what that those places will bless you. If we get this understanding, our attitude towards church and the things of church will change. But for now, people can't understand that we need to attempt great things for God and not for any secular institution. Wow. wow. Let's get it straight. No one else can do what the church does. No. No, 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 no. Do you think that ECG will come and stand that we are going to preach the gospel? No, 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 no. no. Uh, <laughs> and they will do it. Let's be serious. They will not do it. Yeah. Or you mean you think that MPP people will come and stand and say, today instead of campaigning for MPP, we are going to be campaigning for Jesus Christ. For where? He says, so when we begin to leave what we have to do, and do what they have to do and thinking that they will do what we have to do it is foolishness, it's absurdity yeah, that's why the church must wake up and time is really running fast as many people are becoming more and more self-centered and not thinking about the things of God no secondary school ministers Holy Spirit baptism <laughs> Or praise for the sick. No. Have you seen that whole uh, second school? They said uh, one of them is the period. Uh, first, second period is Holy Spirit baptism. <laughs> first period is uh, history. Second period, geography. Third period, Holy Spirit baptism. No, no, no. <laughs> Even the teacher will bring that to sack. <laughs> no hospital is charged with the preaching of Jesus Christ. The same yesterday, today, and forever. No hotel or business can do what the church does. A hotel is not a church. I said a hotel is not a church. Then the hotel manager will be going from door to door. Or oh, yeah, door to door in my church. And he'll be knocking. Room number 101, come, come, come. Uh, I've come to share with you Jesus Christ. Oh, where? Well. And we are sitting down thinking that it will be done. Tell somebody, listen. We are going to attempt great things for God. Now, when I speak of attempting great things for God, I'm talking about fulfilling the Great Commission. I'm talking about the original God giving mandate of the church to go into all the world and preach the gospel. We are not to preach physics. Then we arrive and say, according to uh, uh, what? Newton's law of motion. Action and reaction are opposite in direction. They, they are equal and opposite in direction. Then you stand before the person. Brother, I want to tell you. Newton's law of motion. 
a body will continue in this state of motion until an external force is applied on it and it will go. Do you understand? Hey! Then the church is preaching it. We have not been called to preach chemistry, boys' law, and child's law. <laughs> Teaching about titration and getting to the end point and talking about adding and uh, uh, balancing the chemical equation. No, that's not what we have been called to preach. We have not been called to preach biology, even though once in a while we bring in biology. Last Sunday I was sharing some biology with you concerning metamorphosis. Come on now, put your hands together for Jesus. But that's not what we have been called. It was helping me to preach my second Corinthians 3 18. Yeah, if I'm bringing it in, it's helping me to preach my message. But it's not that that's the main thing. Now you have stopped preaching. Today we are going to learn about Charles Moore. <laughs> An angel will start you here. We have been called to preach sociology or politics. We are to preach Jesus Christ Hallelujah. and Him crucified. Yes. Most universities set aside the church and minimize its importance. It's amazing that the churches which have been set aside and disregarded by universities are the very ones that set aside their own doctrine to follow the university's curriculum. Mm. Yeah. And even now in schools, abroad, in certain places, they don't want to see Bible. If the schools don't want to see Bible, why are we also bringing uh, chemistry books into the church? Nelko the Nelko the Parker. Are you going to use Nelko the Parker? We go to Akiola. What? Gas. Gas. Which one is that? It's a science book. By who? Who is gas? Ghana Association of Science Students, okay. <laughs> what series? SAP. SAP series. Oh. Where are you so good to talk about? You have to use Lambert. Lambert. Very good chemistry book. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need any of those books. This is books like Deku Parker. These are the books we're using. Biology, what were we using? Mega. What? <laughs> Mega biology. Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> Anyway, we should not go into that prayer life, we're also going to other things. <laughs> Why does the church set aside the Bible and teach business, psychology, political science, and business management in the pulpit? Why does the university set aside its business studies, psychology, political sciences, to teach the Bible in the classroom? Why don't they do that? They will not do it because they have given themselves to something else. They are attempting great things in another area. So why do we rather bring in all these things when we have to attempt great things for God? Mm. Let us attempt great things for God. Let us win souls for Jesus. Let us build the church for God. Let us do things that the Bible says are great works. Let us focus on spiritual things that have eternal value. And let us not be impressed with earthly glamour. The things that are highly esteemed among men are an abomination before God. Yeah. I tell you, I don't know how many of you listened to last Sunday's message as Bishop was preaching. He was talking about this lady from Bolivia who said that she was angry and she felt very offended that there is no church in Bolivia. There's no lighthouse church in Bolivia. <laughs> and she was offended. 
But I know why you are crying because <laughs> you are wondering that number one, Bolivia. Who is going to Bolivia? Is it me? It's supposed to be you. You have gone to all other places, but not the places that God wants you to go. And I said, wow. She's offended because she's expecting that people should be there. <laughs> it took great counseling to come here down. Now listen, there's a reason why there's nobody there. There are certain people, they are sitting in the church, they will not move. They said, this is where we are. There are many things we're going to attempt to look at, but the first one I want us to look at, attempt to grow a church. Attempt to grow a church. And um, I'll just touch on it. I believe that will continue later. But in Acts chapter 16, verse 5, if you can give us the New Living Translation, Acts 15, 16 verse 5. Okay. So it says that what? So the churches were strengthened in their faith. May our churches be strengthened in their faith. Amen. And grew larger every day. Wow. Oh, I think it's a good place to put our hands together. May that be our testimony. Amen. That we are growing larger every day. Amen. I see your basenta growing larger every day. Amen. I see your centre growing larger every day. Amen. I see your branch growing larger every day. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the churches were strengthened in their faith. Yes. And they grew larger. 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 That is what God is expecting. And that is what all of us must attempt to do. That we want to see the church grow larger. Amen. We want to see the ministries in the church grow larger. Amen. We want to see the choir growing larger. Amen. We want to see the apostles growing larger. Amen. We want to see the different groups in the church growing larger. Amen. And you see people are so inward looking. And we are okay. I mean, you come to church and you don't see, you see some of the church empty, nothing moves you. Yeah. But someone who is attempting great things for God, especially attempting to grow a church, will notice these things. Yeah. Otherwise, you can be in your Basenta meeting every day when you go, two people, one person. And then you keep quoting the scripture where two or three are gathered in my name. There I am in their midst. So it's okay. Two or three we have gathered is enough. But the Bible says that they grew larger every day. We must grow larger every day. Amen. Every one of you must have that vision in your heart that the church must grow larger every day. Larger. Hey. Attempt great things for God. Attempt growing the church because the church of God can grow if you nurture it. Mm. Achieving church growth is one of the most difficult things to do. It is not an easy thing, though. Yeah, if you see a church that has grown, salute whoever is there. Yeah. I said what? If you have seen a church that has grown, Salute. You see people get up and say, Oh, they don't they do, uh, they, they are looking for money, so they are doing church or they want to. It, it doesn't just happen. <laughs> wow. Many pastors are not able to make their churches grow. Many pastors find it very difficult to grow beyond 70 members. There are few churches that have a thousand real members sitting in the church on a Sunday morning. And the gates of hell are postured against the church. 
Demons keep coming out of the gates of hell to attack the advancing church. And you must fight to achieve church growth. Let it be one of the great ambitions of your life. Achieving church growth is more difficult than becoming a medical doctor. More church growth. Make church growth one of the ambitions of your life. You will accomplish it. Oh yeah. Are you there? Yes. It is more difficult than being a medical doctor. More difficult. And even the doctor they say it. <laughs> because see, the church you are dealing with different things, not just medicine. You are de de dealing with medical issues, social issues, marital issues, financial issues. Business, you are dealing with so many things. Yeah. That's why a doctor cannot just get up and say, I'm doing medicine. <laughs> I'm doing church. Because it is not a simple thing, it's a very spiritual thing. But at least let us attempt. Make an attempt, Brother Lance. Make an attempt to grow the church. Don't just grow your business. Don't just grow your family. There are some people, they are just born in and born in and born in. <laughs> Every year, another child is sucking your breast. Last year, it was this child who was sucking the right one, right one. This year, you have got another one sucking the left one. Three years ago, it was another one. And some of them, they don't stop sucking. Even after three years, they are still sucking their breast. <laughs> And they have become a woman that all they are doing is just breastfeeding. Attempt to grow the church. Hallelujah. Attempt to grow the ashes ministry. Don't just watch it and say we are fine. <laughs> we have done well. You have not done well. And they grew larger every day. Attempt to grow the media team. Attempt to grow the dancing stars. Attempt to grow the people that you are bringing in your bus. Attempt to grow it. You just bring three people. One bus. One big bus. You put three people inside. No attempt to grow it. Oh, you don't understand the message I'm going to change. Instead of attempting to grow your hair, <laughs> or isn't that the things that the ladies are doing? <laughs> Buying creams, and sometimes you see a woman that's giving birth to a, a, a child, a little girl, the girl herself, she doesn't even know what is it, the, the life is all about. You see the mother forcing the hair, trying to pluck the hair. No hair is there. Mr. Pachi said about what? One small one is, hey! <laughs> Attempting to grow the hair. But attempt great things for God. Amen. Attempt to grow a church. Amen. Attempt to have a large church family. Amen. Attempt to have over a thousand members. Amen. Your church can grow if the Holy Spirit is working through you. You can have church, many church members, if you are temporary things for God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Have you heard the scripture, Jeremiah 30, verse 19? Beautiful scripture. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 19. Just about to close. Jeremiah chapter 30, and verse 19. Can you change it to Kojobi? He said, And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them. Amen. Oh, I, I don't know whether you are receiving this one. That's a prophetic word from the prophet Jeremiah. Amen. And I will multiply them. Amen. And I will multiply them. Amen. And I will multiply them. Amen. I see a multiplication of the church. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I see a multiplication of the power. Amen. 
I see a multiplication of the airport stars. I see a multiplication of the teachers and follow-up. I see a multiplication of every percentile. I see a multiplication of centers. I see a multiplication of branches in the name of Jesus. And I will multiply them. I will multiply them. I will multiply them. And they shall not be few. I declare from today that we shall not be few. Amen. In this church, we shall not be few. Amen. I see a multiplication taking place in the name of Jesus Christ. God is multiplying you. You will not just be one person coming to church. When you are coming, there will be 10 people following you. There will be 20 people following you. Your class will be filled with people. There will be a lot of people who would like to come to church with you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I will multiply them. I will multiply them. I will multiply them. I will multiply them. Receive the multiplication. They shall not be few. Then he said, I will glorify them. I will glorify them. Receive the glory of the Lord. And they will not be small. I see glory coming upon us. We shall not be small. As we have ten great things for God. We shall not be small. We shall not be small. Hey, do you believe it? So, how did the apostles achieve church growth? As I close, number one. Right. Attempt to achieve church growth to the level of 3,000 members. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2, verse 41. Acts 2, 41. Then they that gladly received the word were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. May God add 3,000 people to us. Oh, your amen is very weak. I see us growing to 3,000. Do you believe it? I said, do you believe it? So will you attempt to grow the church to 3,000? Will you do your part to grow the church to 3,000? May you receive the grace to do that in the name of Jesus. Instead of attempting to grow other things, growing the cassava in your backyard, attempt to grow the church. Number two. Oh, what a blessing. Attempt to achieve church growth to the level of 5,000 members. Hallelujah. Now the thing is going higher. You see, when you don't give yourself that kind of vision of going up, you will just stagnate and you'll be okay where you are. But you see, in those days, the, 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 the churches were growing to 3,000 and 5,000. And that is how we must see things. Otherwise, we'll be very comfortable. We will think that we have arrived when we have not arrived. We will not put in any more effort. We will not make more attempts to grow the church. We will just be happy where we are. It's like a few people have come. It's okay. But it's not okay. Jesus said, that Anakazo man said, go to the highways, to the byways, to the hedges, to all the corners and the ghettos. He said, go and bring them until the house is built. He said, there's still more room. Beloved, there's still more room. As we have gathered here, there should be more people here than we are. But you see, people are not thinking of attempting. It's like, it's okay. But attempt, try it. Sometimes we just feel that, oh, I cannot do it. But have you tried? Try it. Sinners, try it. Try it and see, you'll be amazed. Yeah. Try it. We see a lot of people, we will not try, especially when it comes to church things. We will try with other things, but not church things. Yeah. You are trying when you are going to rap a girl. You try it. You are looking for a beloved. You try. Many times. Many times. Even when they bounce you, you still go again. You keep trying. Yeah. 
Acts chapter 4 verse 4. How be it? Many of them which heard the word believed. And the number of the men was about 5,000. 5,000. That's why it's just the men. Only the men. Right? The women come to power. Yeah. Hmm. Number three. Attempt to achieve church growth until everything is multiplied. Attempt it until you see that everything has multiplied. And that's why we are not going to give up. We're going to attempt till we see that everything has multiplied. I want to see the prayer ministry multiply. I want to see the power multiply. I want to see the ashes multiply. I want to see everybody, even the choristers and the, those who lead worship, I want to see it multiply. We shall have an array of stars. Different people come to stand there when you pick up the microphone. It, 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 it's amazing because everyone is anointed to lead us in worship. It's going to happen in Jesus' name. Yeah. Oh yeah, God is going to give it to us. Yeah. As we attempt, God will give it to us. Yeah. yeah. I think we have more worship leaders sitting down who can rise up and come and lead. There are more people who can do the media work. There are more people who can do things in the church. Yeah. And people are just seated because we will not attempt it. Attempt. Try. When you're going to write exams, you will see that you write. Attempt four questions, or isn't that what you say? Attempt. <laughs> yeah. Even if you have not learned, you attempt. <laughs> After the six verse one. And in those days, when the number of disciples was multiplied. Multiplied disciples. You see, disciples are different from members. Those of you here are more of disciples. Disciple comes from the word discipline. It takes only disciplined people to decide that I'm going to be in church, even on a weekday. Others do that. I'll come on Sunday, and even on Sunday, we come late. But when disciples multiply, members also multiply. Because the disciples are the ones who go and bring more members. And that is why we must see more disciples. More of you must become greater disciples. Attempting to things from God. Attempting to preach. Attempting to heal. Attempting to raise the dead. At least you have done it. By the time you arrive in heaven, you also attempted to do something. Attempted. Don't just sit there and say, it's for certain people. Who says so? Who, who, who says so? Who says so? There's nothing that is the sole reason of certain people. It's for everybody. You can also do it. Amen. I say you can also do it. Amen. Amen. I don't know anything in the church that I have not attempted. I have attempted even if I didn't try. I couldn't do it. Even keep on. I've attempted all these things. It's an attempt. It's an attempt. What have you attempted? It's a percent. Attempt it. You will join. <laughs> Number four. Attempt to achieve church growth until the whole city comes to the church. <laughs> You love it, eh? yeah. I also love it. The whole city attempted those sinners until the whole of Yamisu is coming to your, your center. Yeah. Then you are attempting. You have a mind. It may be too ambitious, but it is good. It's better. Yes. When you are going to write exam, you don't go and say, hey, if I get 50%, it's okay. Before you realize you have 20. Tell yourself I'm going to get 100%. Yeah. And when you fall, you fall at 70. Yes. But you attempt, you go to 50. Yeah. Oh, me, I'm attempting. You get 50, yeah, I'll take it like that. Before I realize it, 
We're having 15. Not there's some people like that. They write going to the writers and they answer two questions. I've done some three questions. This one at least 15 years. I'll get there. This one, I'm adding this one. Attempt to have a burning vision for church growth. Attempt what? To have a burning vision for church growth. Because everything that we do is based on a certain vision in your heart that is burning to see the church grow. If it's not there in your heart, we are wasting our time. Yeah. It is that thing that will make you pray for it. It is that thing that will make you look for it. It is that thing that will make you talk to people to help you to make it grow. Otherwise, you'll be okay. It will not be something that is coming from outside. The reason why many of you don't do the things that you have to do is because it's not in you. If it's in you, that thing will work something out of you. But when it's not there, we will talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. It will not change. Believe God for a burning vision. Let it burn in your heart. Lord, give me that vision too. Let me also have it. The way Bishop talks about it, I also want to have it. The way he sees the thing about the church, I also want to have it. I want to feel it in my heart too. It shouldn't be that I'm just watching. Every day watching and hearing. And sometimes if you don't take care, you begin to criticize. Every day church room. Every day to work of the ministry. Every day, every day. It's because it's not in your heart. But when the thing gets into your heart, nobody will tell you. You yourself will rise up and say, I want to see the church grow. I want to see the church working. I want to see many people come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Oh, may God put it in your heart. I said, may it burn in your heart. May something burn in your heart. And I don't need to say it to you, but you yourself will find it right there in your heart. We don't need to tell you to come for Tuesday service. We don't need to call you, but it must be in your heart. As a pastor, as a shepherd, as a church member, as a leader in the church, let it burn in your heart. Let it burn in your heart. I said, let it burn in your heart. As you give yourself to the things of God. Stand to your feet, everybody, wherever you are. Put your hands together for Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Lift up your hands to the Lord tonight. Pray for that burning vision in your heart. Pray for it. Pray for a burning vision to attempt something for God. A burning vision to attempt something. To attempt church growth. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and pray. Oh, pray for yourself. A burning vision. A burning vision. A burning vision. Oh God, may we burn for you, oh God. May our hearts burn for you. In the name of Jesus. Rabakatonia Sakatabaria Nerevane. Rikitonio Koshikatanababa. Oh, yes. We will not attend great things for other places. And then the church is standing there. Oh, God. No, we attend great things for the church also. In the name of Jesus. Attending great things for God. Rabakatonia Sakatabane. Rikitonia Sakatabaria. Rabababa. Lakatonia Sakata. Pray tonight. Pray just for three minutes. Pray that there will be a stirring in your heart. Pray that there will be a burning in your heart. Pray that nobody will have to tell you. Nobody has to call you. But you will give yourself to it. You will run and do it. In the name of Jesus. Repandoria Suka Talabane, Repandoria Suka Talabane, Ikatore Katania Bay, Lebandona Baba, let it burn, let it burn in our hearts of God, let it burn in our hearts of God, let it burn in our hearts of God, Repandoro Moshi Katalabane, a burning vision, a burning vision, 
oh Lord, may we attempt great things for you, oh God. Rebari kosi katala baba, rakatuli ala suta la baba, le baba ba. Oh, lift up your hands to the Lord. Tell the Lord, use me for greater works, oh God. Use me for greater works. Hey, na bo shi katala bade, le baba ba ukatuli ya sande le brekatuli. Shela baba ba, rakota bari andolo do su katala bade, le ri ya do su katala bade, na katapa do ri anda. One minute, commit yourself to God. Tell the Lord, you speak, O God. You speak, O God. Rapa katuria sakata bade, shepa la katuria ngabari ane. Le ba 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 kota bade le kosa tala la bade. Le katuria sante le banda ba. Pray thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Pray. Le katuria sakata bade. Yes, Lord. Take our lives, O God. Let it be consecrated, Lord, unto thee. Take our moments and our days. Holy are the souls of the Baba. Let it flow in ceaseless praise. Me katoda ba, shukatari andolo do mo sukata ba de. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Roko sukata ba de na mashikara ba de. And here I am waiting. Aba. I pray, oh, here I am longing for you, oh, oh, hide me in your love, oh, and bring me to my knees. Oh, 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 and may I know Jesus more and more. Oh, you want to sing the game? Here I am waiting. Here I am waiting. Come on. And here I am waiting. Abide in me, I pray. Abide in me, I pray.
Jesus more and more. Oh, how many want to sing it again? I love it. You want to sing beautiful Savior. Come on. And beautiful Savior. I love to feel your touch. I love to feel your touch. Oh, yes, Lord. You never forsake me. You never forsake me. You're always there. You're always there. Oh, 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 oh. Each passing moment, it's you that I adore. It's you that I adore. I love you, Jesus, more and more. Oh. Oh Lord, we bless you. 
We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And somebody shouted amen. Oh, put your hands together for Jesus. Right. God bless you, may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Oh, how many are blessed you came to church tonight? I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. How many are going to attempt some great things for God?
and nature will be inspired to bring something good to you. Amen. This man is a, is a supernatural man. Yes. It's a man of angelic activities. It's a man of angelic works. I see an angel be sent to your house to provide something that you need. Receive it in the name of Jesus. It is your portion. In Jesus' name. Amen. Take out a good offering against this background of the six man that an angel is being sent to you. Take out. I want somebody to sow a seed of victory and lessons. I know you didn't want to sow it. But I just feel that this angelic visitation it should happen practically in your life. In this system. In this system. It's coming to you. Father, bless your children as they gave. In Jesus' name. Amen. Clap for them as they come. 50 younger cities. 50 younger cities. Come all the way. Don't say me, I cannot do it. Attempt it. Attempt it. Attempt it. You have never attempted to get 10 cities before. You do it again for. It's just one city. It's like me. It's only one that can get. Have you attempted? Try. Right. I believe that's all we can get 40, 30, 20. Believing that this is my month of angelic visitation. Rise up and come. 40, 30, 20. Clap for them as they come. 40, 30, 20. Keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping. 40, 30, 20. God bless you. Now, 10 Ghana cities also rise up and come. 10 Ghana cities rise up and come. This shall be your month of angelic visitation. I said, This shall be your month of angelic visitation. In the name of Jesus. Five cities also rise up and come. Five cities rise up and come. Come all the way. Come all the way. Five cities, four cities, three cities, two cities, one city. Rise up. Oh, clap for them as they are coming. Clap for them as they are coming. Receive the prophecy of angelic visitation in the name of Jesus. Somebody's prophetic word. It is your portion. Now, booster. I love it. Take out a booster. Take out a booster. Find a booster. Hey, as I said, have you taken a booster already? The way no movement or no nothing. All the money is finished. Wow. Attempt to find a booster in your pocket. You know that thing sometimes you think there's no money. Then we put your hand there and say, oh, there, no, no, there's money there. So check, check, check. There's money there. How many have found some money? Has it ever occurred to you that one? I mean, has it happened to you? Oh, yeah. One time you are there, then you just go through your book and then you see some 20 cities in the book. Hey! It's very nice, wow. Let up your business. Father, let people find money that they thought was missing. Let people locate money that they thought was never there. In the name of Jesus Christ, by this booster, may money that should have come to you come to you. May it not delay. May it come quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive a speedy miracle and a speedy blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Rise to the front and come and put your booster in. Come on. What are you ten to why? Mm, what are you ten to why? Oh, and open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you.